Well, welcome along to the Time Form Sporting Life Weekend Preview. David Orr joined again by Ben Linfoot, but Scoop, we've attracted a third st third string to our bow this week. Welcome back, Matt Brocklebank. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, a good string as well. He uh, he didn't add. No, no, he didn't. He was silent on that one, wasn't he? So we'll, we'll crack on. One thing he will talk about is Badger Beer. They sponsor the big race at Wincanton on Saturday. The Badger Beer Handicap Chase. We've got the Time Form ratings for this scoop. Top of the shop, Blackjack Magic. Um, 170 with a P as well. Shortlist material? Definitely shortlist material. A little surprised to see him top the time farm ratings. He's a very lightly raced chaser. Only had the four starts over fences and, uh, and didn't finish one of those. But he was good last time at Utoxeter. That was in a novice handicap chase in April. And um, on the back of that, you would give him a squeak here. Now he's taking on plenty of established chasers and he needs to step up. But as you can see, he's got the P next to his figure. So improvement is expected. And he's one of four runners in the race for Anthony Honeyball who could hold the key to this tactically as well. So lots to uh, figure out with Blackjack Magic. Matt, we can't talk Badger Beer without Frode on his back. Same rating as last year. We've got VT of that as well. Paul Nichols as chaser. We know this is his bag, this race. It, it certainly is. Uh, Frodon, horses like this just don't come along very often. You could trot out all sorts of stats when it comes to this horse. One that really leaps out for me is that he's run 42 times over fences and he's fallen just once. He's never unseated, never been pulled up, never brought down. He's drama-free Frodon, isn't he? So with that in mind, you, you, he's so ludicrously predictable as a chaser. So with that in mind, he's dropped back to his last winning mark, which here it is, uh, 158. He was a fair bit higher. I think he might have been sort of 10 pounds higher in the peak uh, of his career so you have to respect his form claims Nichols has won this race plenty of times he's also got three under through five eight times I think he's won it in total hasn't he uh, and together they form a, a really formidable pair now um, Frodon uh, is getting older he's 11 now isn't he rising 12 I suppose Interestingly, he's been given a, an entry in the King George still, so they still might think about going for uh, grade one races with him. Otherwise, it could be kind of like veterans races for him. You know, he's qualified for those now. So uh, a fascinating runner, must be respected on ground that isn't going to be too deep, I don't think. What about how he's going to be run though, Scott? We know he likes to be up there getting along with it. We've got the time form pace map. Is this going to be run to suit Frodo? Possibly. Thursday night, I was uh, watching a few old Badger beers on the, on the telly. And um, I think it pays... You do need to get out more. Your wife was at the theatre <laughs> and you're watching old Badger Yeah, she was watching Calendar Girls. I was watching Badger Beer Chases. But um, it's, uh, it's a race where it's paid to be prominent in the past. We've seen it year after year after year with these Paul Nichols chasers who come and try and make all. Now, Frodon just about made all last year. He was prominent and then led on the second circuit. And uh, there's a bit of pace against him. He's one of those four blobs on the right-hand side, number one Frodon. But there's three who could be up there with him, all three trained by Anthony Honeyball. So like I said at the top of the show, that trainer's tactics really could be key. Blackjack Magic's one of them, Gustavian another, and Sam Brown as well, who's, who's on a bit of a retrieval mission, but um, is, is, is a good horse on his day. So it's dead interesting tactic-wise. If, if he gets a bit of pressure on the front end, it might be against Frodon, but he, he, could, he could well dominate again. So it's, 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 it's a difficult one to try and figure out beforehand. Ben did the running order, Matt. It's on all the videos your way for the start. We've now got the big breakaway in action at Haydock. A horse who's plenty of talent. How do you see him going on Saturday? Yeah, hugely talented, as you say. Lots of runners uh, like to go forward. Prominent front runners might just help set uh, things up for this horse. Um, he's still so lightly raced, isn't he, for his age? You know, when you say Frodon's had 42 starts, this one's only had uh, a dozen starts over fences. You can't blame him for the early exit in the Grand National. Uh, he was knocked sideways at the second fence. But two key elements, I'd say, from this day at Haydock. One positive, one not so positive. The first is that first time out. This was his uh, seasonal debut last season, and he put up a, a fantastic effort, only going down narrowly um, on a softer ground at Haydock. And I suppose that would, for me, would be the, the potential negative, is that on slightly quicker ground this time of year, I, I, I don't think it's going to be absolutely what he wants. Um, and with that in mind, and Frodon getting a, um, up ahead of steam into a rhythm up front, a horse like the big breakaway, those jumping issues from the past might just creep in again um, if they get away from him in the first circuit. Ben, final video clue is Ashtown, Ashtown Lad at Aintree. What do you make of him for this Badger Beer? Yeah, he's, uh, he's an interesting one for Dan Skelton. This is him winning the Beecher Chase uh, last December. He jumped really well this day. Um, 
as you can see, he's pulling away from Geskill and Percussion, two horses who were running the Topham on Saturday afternoon. And uh, yeah, he won this off a mark of 138 and he runs off 142 this Saturday, so only four pounds higher. From a handicapping point of view, he's got a chance. Now, before this win at Aintree, he'd had a prep race at Aintree over hurdles, which got him spot on for the beach. This time, going into the Badger Beers, he's going in there completely fresh. So I just wonder if this might be a launch pad uh, to something else. Dan Skelton's yard, not exactly operating as you would expect them to be, really, at this time of year at the moment. Although he did win with Nick Bocca Glory last Saturday with Tristan Durrell taking £5 off and uh, Tristan Durrell takes £5 off this lad as well. So um, definitely from a handicapping point of view, he's got a chance. It all depends on fitness and how ready he is first time up. As Bucksfizz sang, it's making your mind up time. Matt, you can go first. Yeah, I'm going to uh, mention another horse. Certainly Red, I think, definitely deserves a mention. I think he's going to be my bet in the race. Really strong course form, this horse. Dead progressive last year. His actual record at Wincanton over hurdles and fences lifetime is first, first, second, first. So um, I'd, I'd be surprised if uh, they've uh, left a huge amount to work on in terms of his fitness ahead of this uh, seasonal comeback. Um, it was a quite low-key end to last season, but as a, as a, um, on the back of that, he's, he's dropped a little bit in the weight. So he's only £5 higher than when he won quite well over this course and distance earlier in the year. And if you go back to his win over Gemirond at Sandown prior to that, uh, that form worked out pretty well. So I think there might still be a little bit of wriggle room from his uh, revised handicap mark of 140. Scoop. Yeah, it's really trappy. It's a no-bet race for me, but I think Frodon will probably win. And if... The big breakaway jumps well, he could win. If that's enough, I think three and a five will win for Paul Nichols. Unbeaten going right handed. Paul thinks it's four from a uh, five from five. Ben thinks four from four going right handed, but he's had a wind operation and he gets a very positive mention in Paul's Betfair corner. Now, before we move on for some Saturday best bets from elsewhere, I hope you caught the first episode of our Taking the Reins podcast. Absolutely fantastic with Tom Marquand. It was a fascinating episode too, hitting the airwaves at 6 pm on Sunday with Ross Orion. And here's a sneak preview of what you can expect from that. I have had good chances in Group 1s, came up short in a couple of them by margins. And then Shaquille the win, doing what he did. Shaquille muscling home and he's clear by two lengths. The Royal Ascot winner doubles up in the July Cup. Yeah, you're a young right in a Group 1 winner, but to me it felt a, a lifetime. When you're a couple of lengths clear around Catrick, Will Rampton, you think this will look good in the mantelpiece now I'll get a bit lower. <laughs> this is going to go one way, we're going to stop here now or we're going to go. From Ross of Iron to Ben Linfoot, I want your best bet from elsewhere on Saturday, please, Scoop. Not that you had one for the Badger Bear Chase. <laughs> no, but I have got one at Wing Canton, Dave. I do fancy one. In the 3.32, the Mayor's Handicap Hurdle. Good luck charm at a big price, I think, for Anthony Honeyball, who, we, who we've spoken about quite a lot already in this video preview. Now, I looked at his record in Mayor's Handicap Hurdles. It is very good. It is uh, 31 winners from 114 goes at 28% in Mayor's Handicap Hurdles. Astonishing record, really. And that includes a winner in this race, Lily War, um, a couple of years ago. And he, he had a second as well at 33 to 1 midnight tune in this race um, a couple of years after that. So um, he's got a good record in this type of race and this good luck charm. Um, she's got a really interesting profile. In, in, she improved after wind surgery in the spring over, over fences, but just a jump and just let her down on a couple of occasions. But I think it was the sort of performance that showed she's in good form and responded well to the, to the breathing operation. And uh, she returns to hurdles off a good mark. She's won over hurdles off 112. She runs here off 107. Goes well fresh every season. Over 20 to 1. Eight runners. Hopefully all eight run and we get a good each way bet. 2021 each way bet for Ben. Matt, what are you putting up? I don't think it'd be quite that bigger price, but uh, the, the ground is definitely going to be far more testing, I suspect, up at Aintree. And in the Potemps qualifier, it's not hard to see them coming home in instalments, really. I think you need to be looking for a grizzled older chaser with a load of uh, heavy ground form in this race. So step forward, Bushy Park, Phil Kirby's nine-year-old horse, actually won the uh, North Yorkshire Grand National at Catterick last season. Isn't badly handicapped. If you go back to t uh, February 2021, he won a Potemps qualifier at Haydock on bad ground as well. So I think he's got a really good, uh, a good chance in this. And if he's ready enough, I think he might be the 
might be the last man standing in what's going to be a really gruelling affair at Aintree. Talking about gruelling affairs next week, it's a three-day open meeting at Cheltenham and we'll be here to preview the big race action on the Saturday and Sunday, the Paddy Power Gold Cup, Great Wood uh, Hurdle as well. Ben, you're down there for, for the, um, the weekend, looking forward to it? I am, yeah. It's, uh, it's the first of the big jumps festivals really, isn't it? Really good three-day meeting, a little bit more relaxed than the extravaganza in March and uh, some big names on show, so yeah, looking forward to going down. Well, if you're watching Kevin Clark, you're back in the hot seat next week. You'll be here previewing it with myself and Matt. There's our thoughts on this weekend's action and best of luck with your own bets across Saturday.